Welcome back. And, and now to talk about the improvement uh, in the economy and the economic indicators, which seem to be on an uh, upward uh, trend right now, per uh, Raza Bakir, who's the governor of the State Bank. We have with us in our studios to discuss this, Mr. Fahim Sardar, who's an economist, as well as the managing director of Tangent, which is an independent economic uh, think tank and corporate advisory. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us again Thank on our program. Uh, sir, so let's uh, get into what um, the Governor State Bank has said. He said that um, right now we've seen that uh, there's been an economic turnaround. Now it's being acknowledged. We're seeing that the stock market's improved. We're also seeing that um, a lot of uh, the economic indicators sto show stabilization for Pakistan's economy. So can you elaborate a little bit on that, please? Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, when we talk about the growth in the economy, that's, uh, that's going to happen in the very near future. But right now, there is a stabilization of, it, of sorts. Mm -hmm. Now, stabilization of what? At the macro level, there were some issues which needed to be stabilized. But uh, we also have to bear in mind that um, the, how we approach an economic problem, an economics problem, it, it is also very important because there are many ways to do to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll get to that in the second part of my answer. Right now, Pakistan is going through a, um, uh, Pakistan was and still is going through an austerity uh, transition. Mm -hmm. And during that pre process, one has to be very, very frugal. One has to be very careful about how much money you spend, where you spend it. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the problem in Pakistan is we have limited revenue generation by the government. If the government wants to generate, let's say, five trillion rupees in tax, mm -hmm. most of that goes into debt repayment mm -hmm. and interest payment. So that itself is a vicious cycle. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just interject here that this Governor State Bank said that we've increased revenues by 20 to 30 percent, which mm -hmm. is significant. It but is significant. More is needed. Well, we need much more because, and we can do much more. It's not like the, it's all uh, doom and gloom, hardly. Uh, how we approach uh, situation is important uh, because we have certain statistics which uh, let us know that we need to perhaps change our approach. Pakistan is the sixth largest country on earth. Pakistan has the sec third largest city on earth, which is Karachi. Pakistan had a very uh, robust, still does, it has a very robust uh, economy. We're, we're getting into tourism, we're about to get into petroleum more aggressively. But at the same time, what we did, we did two things which sort of created problems for us. And that's where the second part of my answer comes in. The first part is that, yes, there is a stabilization of sorts, which is going to lead to growth. The second part is how we approach a problem. Hmm. Can we just, uh, where, where the stabilization is, I just want to, you know, just add here what exactly yeah. you mean by that, that the... Um, uh, exports saw a modest increase, imports reduced, so we had the trade deficit is sort of balanced out. The um, current account deficit turned into a surplus. And the, the problem we were having with the foreign exchange reserves has improved as well. And as far as our exchange rate is concerned, that's pretty, it's stabilized uh, now. And um, he, it's, it used to be, uh, uh, it, it's now, it used to be a fixed rate and now it's market driven. So all of these things um, contributed to the stabilization part. Now, you Indeed. Know, uh, uh, what we, what the, what the government did was they took a, an extremely conservative view of how to handle the economy. Mm -hmm. So they int increased interest rates from 5.75 percent to 13.25 percent, mm -hmm. which is unprecedented in, I think, the history of economics. Something like this seldom happens in a yeah. span of 14 months, mm -hmm. which really and tough decisions had to be made for that. Yeah, and uh, I actually d don't agree with that decision. Mm -hmm. We have in our quarterly review very aggressively mm -hmm. uh, given solutions okay. and, you know, moder uh, midway solutions, okay. not extreme solutions. Gradual. Uh, very, uh, of course, this, this is economics. You, do ne you never experiment in economics, mm -hmm. never, ever, especially when you're about to go into something big. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what the government did was they increased the interest rates to, to kill demand. Mm -hmm. When you kill demand and they, at the same time, what they did was they rose regulatory duties and they, they stopped unnecessary imports. That basically helped the trade deficit situation that you were talking about. So that uh, plugged in one of the hemorrhages. The second thing that which uh, I, I'm uh, not really, you know, in favor of was the over devaluation of the rupee. From 105 rupees, we went down to 162. Mm -hmm. And in the last quarter, we have actually seen, in the last few months, we've actually seen the rupee rise. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. by approximately more than 5%. So right here, the governor of the state bank, now I'm just going to give you the government's angle, mm -hmm. which they said that there was a 55% uh, increase in the exchange rate in 18 months. And when they compared it with Egypt, there was a 125% increase in the exchange rate in 24 hours. Okay. So compared to certain you know, mm -hmm. really disastrous situations, mm -hmm. it's, this was still sort of contained? Uh, I think we're all with the governor of the state bank and we want this situation resolved, but uh, then we can also give certain other examples. Okay. What, what we're trying to do is be constructive here. Uh, yes, he's right. That did happen in Egypt, and yes, that did happen in Pakistan. He's mm -hmm. absolutely 100% right. Uh, we're just saying that maybe there's another way of approaching it as well, which can actually be beneficial to the state bank of Pakistan and to the government and to the public at large. Okay. Right now, what we're seeing is uh, uh, the government is trying to stabilize the rupee, which is ha happening on its own now. Hmm. That's, that's, that's a big achievement. That's very, po that's that's a big a very positive improvement. How often have we seen the rupee kind of go back up in value? Exactly. It usually goes down and exactly. then further down. Exactly. So, I mean, you can see the bounce back coming uh, uh, in, uh, in from the markets. And w what we need to understand is that the rupee needs to be somewhere near 135 rupees maximum, okay. mm -hmm. not minimum. So we've even given a range in our assessments because we have studied this uh, rigorously. Um, the interest rate that we hope to see from the State Bank of Pakistan is close to 8.5%. Mm -hmm. The rupee value that we hope to see should be hopefully between 125 rupees to 135 rupees. That so you would think be it should be best kept at that level? Not it should be maintained. Be Every country maintains it. This mm -hmm. is this is a, this is a, a wrong assumption. If somebody says that any currency is free floated, that does not happen. Mm -hmm. You cannot allow a currency to free float. Mm -hmm. So every currency, whether it's the pound sterling, whether it's the euro, whether it's the U.S. dollar, whether it's the Indian rupee, whether it's the Pakistani rupee. Every currency has to be managed. But sir, wasn't this uh, part of the IMF's requirements before we got their uh, facility? Of course, the IMF typically asks you to do two things. A, kill demand. B, uh, devalue your currency. So that's what happens. That's what they did in uh, Thailand. That's what they did in uh, every country that they've entered. So that is their modus operandi, which is fine. I mean, you can understand what they're doing. They're saying be conservative, mm -hmm. kill your demand, start. And the free-floating exchange rate. They want that, but uh, at the end of the day, how many countries can actually do that? Mm -hmm. Even your, your, the euro is not on free float. Mm -hmm. It is managed within mm -hmm. a range. Within the range, it's free, but anything that goes near either range, they have to step in. Mm -hmm. Because if you do not step in, that will be cataclysmic for international trade. Mm -hmm. Now, in Pakistan, you see, uh, maybe it's a blessing in disguise, our international trade is rising, but it's not like other countries where take our, uh, uh, our neighbor India, they are in deep trouble. I predicted this four years ago on live TV that their economy is fake and this and that. Okay. And now all of that is coming true because they're so heavily exposed in the international markets. Mm -hmm. So you cannot allow your currency or your economy to go up and down too much with too much erratic uh, um, patterns because mm. that causes a lot of trouble. Mm. What, what Pakistan is doing right now is, is trying to reduce the patterns. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. The good news is that the rupee is uh, partially on its own, I think, and it's uh, rising. Our, uh, we've started to see a modest rise in exports, mm -hmm. we've, uh, as the governor state bank did say. And the, the devaluation of the rupee didn't have a significant in impact on the exports increasing, though, it had a, um, which we would have expected by devaluation. As I said, as I said, that if the rupee had been kept at uh, around about 135 rupees maximum, you might have seen a better result because what's happened right now is. Uh, this is, I keep saying to people that in economics, you, you never do anything erratic. You have to do it very slowly, very gradually. That's when it, economics works. So, I mean, when you take medicine, you never take medi the whole bottle in one day. You take it as per a prescription, and, mm -hmm. and less medication is sometimes better. Right now, the whole situation is that um, if a foreign investor wants to invest a million dollars in Pakistan, they are extremely scared, mm -hmm. not because of the security situation, but because... If they buy rupees at 100 and let's say uh, 55, mm. and tomorrow if the rupee goes to 165, I'm just saying, imagine those who bought it at 120 and suddenly the rupee went down mm. to 160. So that's like a 30% loss, a loss mm. when they're going to convert it back to their 
currency and route it back to their headquarters. So one has to keep things within a band. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the, what the administration is trying to do, mm -hmm. keep things in a band. We uh, have been very vocal for a year and a half mm -hmm. about two things. Number one, interest rates should not be raised so aggressively. Hopefully they'll come down. Two, the rupee has to be managed in a band. Three, we've also heard the, uh, this is very positive, we've heard the uh, governor of the state bank saying that inflation is expected to go down. Yes, because this is, the, this point right there is what translates to the common man. Because we, we talk about macroeconomic indicators being, you know, positive and Pakistan is stabilizing, but the common man right now is feeling a pinch. So how does this, how do you see this translating to the common man? A little painfully, mm. and it uh, hopefully that pain will uh, lessen with time because, um, it, as I said, it was too drastic. Mm -hmm. Whatever steps Pakistan took, we, we haven't seen that happen very often in economics, mm -hmm. economics governance, or how, however you want to call it. The bottom line is the the public always has to pay for everything, and at the end of the day, in Pakistan, what what we need right now is to reduce this uh, inflationary pressure mm. and allow interest rates to come down so that business starts to expand. That is where the public will actually be, get a lot of benefit because their business will start to accelerate. That's okay. where they start to earn more. Companies will start to earn more. They will hire more. They will not lay off people. Uh, there will be more retention, there will be more savings, and there will be more consumption. Then that it has a multiplier effect. Okay, very interesting discussion. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. Fahim Sardar, for joining us again on our program. Um,